good afternoon everyone today we are welcoming mr pu joram tonga and we will chief minister of mizoram for his online lecture on india ireland relations and the importance of mizoram under india ireland friendship lecture series mr pu joram tonga was born in a village called samthang in eastern mizoram he completed his schooling in mizoram despite many challenging circumstances following a brief stint as headmaster of Changfai Middle School after his matriculation, Pu Joram Thanga went to neighboring Manipur State to pursue college education at Imphal. He was a gifted student and ranked second in college in the pre-university examinations. This habit of standing out from his classmates continued into graduation as he was the only candidate in the entire Bachelor of Arts English Honours class to pass the final examinations. Pu Joram Thanga had dreamt of joining the Indian Administrative Service, but events in Mizoram at the time meant that he had to sacrifice his ambition for the betterment of his people. Mr. Joram Thanga was a minister in Mizoram from 1987 to 88. He was Chief Minister of Mizoram from 1998 to 2008 and has been Chief Minister since December 2018 till present. He has visited many countries including Switzerland, Germany, Italy, Turkey, Singapore, Egypt, Jordan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, etc. I now request His Excellency Ambassador to present his thoughts on the occasion which will be followed by the lecture by Honorable Chief Minister. Namaskar, warm greetings to all Irish and Indian friends who are joining this program. Uh, friends, this year marks a historic milestone for India and Ireland. Uh, we are celebrating Ajadi Kamrit Mahotsav, 75 years of our independence, while Ireland is observing 100 years of its independence. So as India's new ambassador to Ireland, it is my great privilege uh, not only to celebrate the past relationships between our two countries, but also to strategize about the next 25 years. Looking back, friends, India and Ireland have traditionally enjoyed extremely close and cordial friendship. Ireland inspired India through its freedom struggle. Uh, Ireland uh, was also a great source of inspiration when we were drafting our constitution and the constitution of Ireland served as a useful model for our legal experts. Uh, President Iman De Villora himself uh, was very kind to share first-hand experience of uh, a Republican constitution with the uh, legal experts uh, who were involved in drafting of our constitution. The friendship between W.B. Yates and Ravindar Tagore remains iconic. Similarly, contribution of many Irish dignitaries and distinguished personalities like Annie Besant, Margaret Noble and Margaret Cousins in cultural and social and political reawakening of uh, Indian masses is also something we gratefully remember. Looking ahead, uh, I see there is tremendous potential for us to build on the very strong foundation of india Ireland partnership. Uh, today, India is the third largest economy in purchasing power parity terms. It is the fastest growing economy in G20. And Ireland, on the other hand, is uh, the fastest growing economy within the European Union. It is the only English speaking country in European Union after Brexit. Ireland has also emerged as a very fascinating hub of uh, cutting edge technologies in IT and medical sector and uh, medical devices, uh, fintech and medtech and agritech and aviation. Also, the startup cluster of Ireland, higher technical education cluster of Ireland is very fascinating. And there is a huge synergy uh, between India and Ireland which can be leveraged for strengthening uh, uh, mutually beneficial partnerships. But the first step in realizing the potential is uh, much wider dissemination of uh, the potential itself, uh, creating wider awareness about what uh, opportunities are uh, available uh, for Irish friends within India uh, and also for Indian uh, entrepreneurs in Ireland. So in order to 
widen the information network. The Indian Embassy has taken the initiative to launch India-Ireland Friendship Lecture Series. Uh, the the uh, spirit behind this initiative is to connect uh, all parts of India with Ireland through virtual platforms. Similarly, create much wider awareness in India about every uh, county of Ireland. Also, create awareness about very remarkable uh, socio-economic, technological, cultural uh, transformation that Ireland is going through. Uh, and also a similar transformation which is uh, taking at a breathtaking pace in India. Uh, I'm not only looking at the business point of view, but also uh, uh, learning from each other in the, in the field of culture, the creativity, uh, the creative industries, uh, as well as uh, learning from each other's uh, experience in uh, democratic transformation. Uh, what challenges as we two demo vibrant democracies are facing uh, in dealing with contemporary issues, uh, they are also very relevant for both of us. Today, friends, we are especially privileged and deeply honored to have a really eminent uh, guest speaker uh, under the India Argan Friendship Lecture Series. Uh, we are truly blessed and privileged to have uh, Honorable Chief Minister of uh, Mizoram, uh, Zoram uh, Thanga. Uh, he is a very renowned, very seasoned, very experienced uh, grassroots level political leader and uh, we are looking forward to his presentation on uh, the very impressive uh, transformation of Mizoram under his leadership. Uh, Mizoram is uh, one of the most beautiful uh, states in India that I have had honor of visiting. It is so vibrant uh, uh, in culture, its dances, its folk music, its uh, traditions its handicrafts, its natural beauty is truly really stunning. We look forward to listening to Honorable Chief Minister and learning about the new opportunities which we can leverage for strengthening the relationship and partnership between India and Ireland. Once again, it's a great privilege for us to welcome Honorable Chief Minister of Majora. Thank you, sir. Greetings, everyone. At the very outset, please allow me to express my gratitude and being invited by Ambassador Achilles Misra to deliver this virtual lecture as part of the India Ireland Friendship Lecture Series. I am honored to be a part of this noble effort to revive the traditional spirit of solidarity and affinity between the people of Ireland and the people of India, and in doing so, also present the state of Mizoram as a ready partner in the emerging, emerging opportunities for partnership between our two countries. Before I delve into other matters, I must make mention of the interesting connection between Irish Education East and the government here. The Christian Brothers of Ireland, founded by Sir Edmund Rice, run several educational institutions in many places across India. Saint Edmund schools and colleges situated in Shillong, the capital city of the neighboring state of Meghalaya, is one such example. From the 1960s on what students from Mizoram flocked to Shillong, seeking better education and gain admission into the schools and colleges there, of which Saint Edmund's as an institution was considered one of the best. The Irish brother must have done a good job because many of the schools and colleges alumni have consistently gone on to attain prominence in society, including occupying important positions in both the central government and in the government of Mizoram. Aside from success in other fields, as a matter of fact, the Chief Minister's Office, Mizoram, has the distinction of having at Edmundians hold important positions and senior posts over the years, even now, there are seven and one schools and college alumni currently employed here, one of whom is the advisor to the chief minister, legal. <clears throat> As we are no doubt aware, people of India and Ireland share a bond in that both our countries are occupied by colonial forces and went on to attain independence that is hard fought. 
Our two countries have enjoyed long-standing ties of friendship and goodwill, with Ireland being a source of inspiration for India's freedom struggle, and the Irish Constitution having a marked influence on the drafting of our own. To this day, the friendship between no Nobel laureate YB Eads and Rabindranath Tagore is of interest to researchers and laymen alike. Ambition, the tears feast, perhaps the most well-known Irish person in India, with the possible exception of Bono, took an active part in Indian freedom struggle, helping to launch the Home Rule Movement in 1940 to campaign for democracy in India and dominion status within the British Empire catapulted her into active politics in addition to other endeavors in different fields, not the least of which is setting up the Central Hindu College in modern day Varanasi and fighting prevailing social evil like the caste system and the child marriage. The fact that there were other Irish women who became icons of social awakening and political consciousness in India is peculiar. I would like to name a couple. Margaret Noble, who later became known as Sister Nivedita after becoming one of Swami Vivekananda's most zealous followers. Then we have Margaret Cousins, who is perhaps most well known for co-founding the All Indian Women's Conference in 1927. And in 1932, <clears throat> being jailed by the British for speaking against emergency measures introduced by them. Perhaps the most striking display of Irish nationalism in India was the Connaught Ranger Mutiny in 1920, when a company of the Rangers comprising of Irish men rose in mutiny in the city of Jalandhar as a mark of protest against the British Army and its activities in Ireland. While this incident was not directly linked to the Indian freedom struggle, people drew inspiration from it as the Irish were just as colonized as the Indians, and many Indian publications of the time supported the mutiny. Moreover, many Indian revolutionaries looked to Ireland for inspiration and strategy, and it can be said that links between the two countries were strengthened by a connection between the respective nationalist movement since the early 90s. <clears throat> Eventually, India attained its independence from foreign rule in 1947, and a formal diplomatic links were established between the two countries, with India opening an embassy in Dublin in 1951, and Ireland following suit in New Delhi in 1964. Relations between our people were strengthened by the outpouring of support by the Irish after the Kanishka incident in which an Air India aircraft was brought down by a terrorist bomb in Southwest Ireland in 1985. The people of India can never forget the kindness and solidarity extended to the victims' families, especially by the local population, in the aftermath of this mindless tragedy. In fact, an annual commemoration ceremony is organized by the local community which I am told is attended by the Indian ambassador to Ireland every year. I am pleased to note that as time has gone by, Ireland has become a destination of choice for many Indian students seeking higher education, particularly in postgraduate, doctoral and postdoctoral studies in fields ranging from medicine to management. As a matter of fact, there have been a few students from Mizoram who have completed their education <clears throat> in Ireland and continue to live and work there while others have returned home to pursue highly successful careers. <clears throat> I will not be surprised if numbers of students and professionals from India seeking to study and work in Ireland increase simply because of the fact that Ireland has consistently been ranked as one of the best places to live in the world.
India and Ireland are both fast growing economies. India has the third largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity with a GDP of over 11.5 trillion US dollars and is estimated to grow by 8.2% this year. This is no mean feat, given the challenges we have had to face and still do as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ireland, with a GDP of about half a trillion US dollars, is the fastest growing economy in the European Union and is the hub of many of the world's biggest companies. However, bilateral economic engagement between our two countries is much below potential. There could be several reasons behind this. But the one that comes to mind is the relative lack of mutual awareness about the remarkable transformations occurring in India and Ireland <clears throat> on the face of it. There appears to be little in common between our two countries aside from the historical connection I have mentioned earlier. Even more so between Ireland and our small state of Mizoram, located in the remote corner of India. However, a deeper analysis revealed that there exist many avenues for cooperation and fostering of a mutually beneficial partnership. Mizoram is one of the smallest states in India <clears throat> and one of the youngest having attained statehood as late as 1987 with a population that is almost 99% Christian. The, eight, the years prior saw an armed insurgency for decades aimed at bringing about a more just and equitable socio-economic and political system for the people of Mizoram, which at the time was a part of the larger state of Assam and was later upgraded to the state of an union territory administered directly by the central government. I myself was a part of this movement and spent many years in the jungles of Mizoram and neighboring regions, leading the struggle along with my colleague. Now, Mizoram has a distinction of being known as the most peaceful state in northeast region of India and perhaps the entire country too. We have come a long way since 1987 indeed, but we still have a long way to go. We do not have many natural resources that conventionally make a region suitable for a large-scale invasion, investment. However, Mizoram's location, bordering Bangladesh in the west and Myanmar in the east, affords it a unique location specific advantage, as it can act as a gateway for the international trade with Southeast Asian countries. Facilitation of trade has improved over the years with improvement in road, and rail, and air connectivity. <clears throat> Mizoram is blessed with rich flora and fauna and forest cover that is highest in India, extending to 85% of the state's geographical area. Our state could be a gold mine for researchers seeking out medicinal and aromatic plants. We are the second largest producer of bamboo in Northeast India and my government recognizes the immense potential in bamboo cultivation, which is why we have included it as part of the government policy. Bamboo forests consisting of about 35 species cover over 3,000 square kilometer of Mizoram geographical area. This offer immense potential for the commercial exploitation of the plant. We are also second largest producer of strawberries in India, and I am sure growth will be sustained in this regard. The climate in Mizoram is conducive for the breeding and commercial exploitation of all kinds of silk worms. In fact, sericulture is one of our key industries, and my government is trying its best to bring about faster growth in this sector. I am proud to inform this audience that Mizoram is one of the most literate states in India and has consistently occupied this position for years now, which brings me to another resource we have in abundance, our human resources. 
we have a population of slightly over a million people. As per statistics from the year 2020, 61% of this population is in a working age group of 15 to 59 years. We have a highly literate and well-educated youth population who needs jobs and avenue for employment. However, the government sector can only provide so much in terms of employment, while private industry in Missouri is still at a very nascent stage. As I mentioned earlier, we have an abundance of greenery in our state. The terrain is steep in many places, but this also means that we have some of the most beautiful landscapes and scenery in the country. Rolling hills, serene valleys, large green forests, lakes and rivers are a major feature of the landscape here. Hence, our state has immense potential for tourism, both domestic and international. Realizing this, the state government has championed the concept of responsible tourism, adventure sports, and homestays where guests can experience how locals live and travel across the length and breadth of Missouri. As a matter of fact, Paragliding is fast becoming the adventure sports of choice for those who visit Missouri. Infrastructure in this regard has been developed to the extent that the World Air Sport Federation, or FAI, Category 2 International Paragliding Accuracy Championship 2020 was held successfully at Cherchi, Missouri where 67 pilots from all over the world registered to participate. Mizoram is also well suited for small-scale industries based on bamboo, timber, and agriculture. Our handloom and handicraft are well known throughout the country, but need more investment to increase their visibility, popularity, and access to new markets. Agriculture is still the main occupation in our state, and the government here is attempting albeit with our limited resources to make it sustainable. Infrastructure development is another area where we have made huge strides, much, but much remains to be done. We need better roads, railway lines, and inland waterways, all crucial for development, as that is inclusive and sustainable. The government here realizes the need of our state and challenges we still face in accomplishing these challenges. In effect, our flagship socio-economic development program was introduced with the aim of bringing about socio-economic development that is inclusive and people-centric. Well, the state government is doing what it can to increase the pace of development, enhance our standard of living, and bring about a better future for our people. The fact remains that the government can only do so much, especially in a developing country like India. More so because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic effects of the war in Ukraine that have had worldwide effects. Mizoram seeks partners who understand our unique needs and aspirations of our land and its people towards this end. I would like to use this opportunity to issue an open invitation to captains of Irish industry and government officials to come and see our beautiful state for themselves. Such a visit would afford us an opportunity to explore ways in which we can start a partnership that is mutually beneficial. I would like to convey my warmest wishes to members of the small but extremely creative and respected Indian diaspora in Ireland, especially the small Mizo community there, and as I do to everyone who has taken the time to listen to this message from me on behalf of the people of Mizora. <coughs> Mizora needs private and public investments from outside the state and country if we are to attain our goals of bringing about a better life for our people and contribute in a tangible way to nation building, I have mentioned some of the areas where this could be possible. On the other hand, 
we also have a lot to offer to countries like Ireland and to the world as Mizoram is a young but vibrant state and we can only grow from here. I hope this marks a new chapter in Indo-Irish relation and the awakening of a mutual curiosity in each other's countries and cultures, the beginning of a prosperous friendship for both sides. Thank you, Jain Slan. It was a great privilege for all of us to listen to very inspiring uh, address by Honorable uh, Chief Minister of Mizoram. Uh, we are very grateful to him for sparing time to address us uh, under India Ireland Friendship Lecture Series. Uh, out of his uh, presentation, uh, we uh, identify four areas uh, to follow up. Uh, bamboo, strawberry, tourism, cultural heritage, creative industries. Uh, we can uh, uh, begin uh, by creating virtual platforms for in disseminating information on each of these four uh, elements. And uh, uh, our embassy will be a contacting Honorable Chief Minister's office for further guidance to take these ideas forward. We are once again deeply obliged to Honorable Chief Minister of Mizoram for uh, his very valuable, very inspiring address.